everybody. Today we're going to be talking about something huge, absolutely huge. We're going to be talking about if Christmas is a pagan holiday, is it fake news, who knows, we're going to talk about it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is Justin with an incredible Donald Trump I'm pretty sure it was just Donald Trump. Yeah, he, yeah, I can see him right in front of me. Right here. He was, yes, he, he came into uh, the <laughs> studio to record the question, is Christmas a pagan holiday? And then... With that, uh, once we cover that and we solve all the issues ever addressed there, we'll then get into the topic of uh, should you allow your kids to believe in Santa? And if so, how long? Uh, people have different thoughts on that. Christians have a lot of different thoughts, if you could imagine. So we're going to dive right in. Some Christians don't celebrate Christmas because they hold it to be a pagan holiday. Any thoughts about that? Anyone want to jump in? They're wrong. Wow. So Zeke says they're wrong and very, very in-depth <laughs> answer. Uh, That's the end thought? of the show. To be fair with what they're saying, it, it does come from the original roots of a pagan holiday that Catholics adapted to be a Christian-focused holiday. And I think most people know that Jesus probably was not really born in December. I believe they think it was more springtime was what people say. Prove it. You got me. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> if you cannot find the manger Jesus was born in, your opinion is invalid. Checkmate atheist. Oh, man. All right. Any um, other thoughts? That are- is that true, though? I don't know that we even adopted another holiday. Like, which holiday are you talking about? I can't. Uh, what is the name of it? You're talking least? about Solo Invictus? Hmm. I, can, I cannot remember. I think it's Midsummer or something like that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the same I, one. I can't recall, but either <laughs> way, stuff. it was mm-hmm. basically a they did really bad stuff, and Catholics wanted to make it a more wholesome Christian holiday to keep them from doing this, so they changed it from being about all this bad stuff to more focused on, let's celebrate the birth of Christ. Even though he may not have necessarily been born in Christmas, let's make it a more Christian-focused holiday. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? I, I don't know enough to say it's true or false, but I mean, I let's say let's just go with what Justin's saying because I don't know. So if that's the case, do y'all have a problem with us taking a pagan holiday and making it Christian? Is there anything wrong with that? No. I, I think as long as it's like very obviously, if you say let's let's make this Christian, but let's still keep let's worship the devil. <laughs> And and sacrifice a goat before the blood altar. That's escalated really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, obviously, that's not. I don't think that's really what they did. But I mean, if you're doing things along those lines, that's very obviously not what you should do as a Christian and claiming it's a Christian holiday. You're you're wrong. You're in the wrong path. Isaac, I think you wanted to jump into the conversation. What would you have to mm-hmm. say? I'll come come back to me. Come back to me. So I'm going to play a little bit of a devil's advocate. Y'all make fun of me for using that term, Isaac. Why does the devil need an advocate? And why are you so eager to be it? <laughs> I know. I just, it's the lawyer in me. But. Are you saying lawyers are of the devil? Basically. No, he's, yes, he's, he's not answering. Yes, I am. No, just kidding. <laughs> lawyer friends out there, I love you. Don't get mad at me. Uh, so here is a little bit of a pushback. If we can take stuff that's openly pagan and we can Christianize it, like, oh, put in a little Christian twist, a little theology here, Bible there, and make it Christian, is there a limit to us doing that in in culture in general? So, for example, this could take us way off topic, so I might have to uh, rein us in depending on where this goes. Uh, Some people, like on a Sunday morning, will sing an openly anti-Christian song. I I can think of one, uh, uh, Highway to Hell, was one time sang in a church because the the thinking was, the thinking was, what's that, Justin, your facial expression? I'm just saying, I have begged our our music (laughs) minister to let us do that for for years. I'm just saying. And the thinking thinking was (laughs) that Christ redeems. You can take stuff that's in the world But maybe if it's a sermon on hell or a sermon on heaven, uh, God can redeem it and use it for good. And it was used in a church service. It was some mega church somewhere. (laughs) Anyways, uh, Isaac, are you ready to, uh, what you got for us? 
based on what you just said, I want to talk about that. It's different when you're talking about like taking a day and then turning it for Christ as in like we don't celebrate the pagan rituals or anything. We don't sacrifice goats and worship Satan. Everything we do is for Christ. Um, We celebrate him, his birth and all that stuff. But with the song, it's like you're literally singing a song that means something. It means, oh, I'm on a highway to hell and you're trying to turn it to something it, it can't mean. we on that highway before Jesus? Exactly, Isaac. But it says, I'm on a highway. It doesn't say I was on a highway. It says, I'm on a highway to hell. It describes humanity apart from Christ. So would you say that if you were an atheist, you would not be on this highway to hell? Isaac? Check are, you, atheists. Are, are atheists Christians? Okay, exactly. H-E-L, buddy. <laughs> There's two of those. There's two of Another those. one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm going to take Isaac's side of, I think there's a difference between taking a time of the year where pagans do certain thing and we do something completely different. And then there's a difference between that and taking a practice that a pagan would do and inheriting that practice and then calling it Christian. If we sacrifice like If we start doing goats, like yeah. the whatever pagans do for that time of year, Christmas time of year, and we start doing that stuff... We would all probably agree that's not good. So in the Bible, the Canaanites sacrificed babies to Molech. If the Jews were like, you know what? We're just going to do this in honor of God and start sacrificing our babies to God. Is that okay or wrong? Yes. Okay. Now, what if they went from, I'm again, I don't believe these things. This is just for conversation. He's the Antichrist. Yes. Uh, but we do practice, they, they did in those days practice sacrifices. So, for example, the, the equivalent to the the this, uh, Christmas conversation, the birth of the sun was maybe the pagan version, sun being S U N, the the solstice, versus the birth of the sun S O N being the birth of Christ. I again, it just seems like we're just doing something pagan and just calling it Christian. Okay, so this is what you said. You said, so they sacrificed animals. So that was kind of the same thing as us changing Christmas. And it was okay in the I'm, Old I'm Testament. I'm trying to steer us back to more of the Christmas conversation. Yeah, so what I'm saying is you can't take something. If we were worshiping, doing the things that pagans did to worship Jesus, I think that would be wrong. Just as if you sacrifice babies to Yahweh, you know, yeah. that would be wrong. But we're not doing that we're taking a day and changing it completely centered around god and around jesus birth yeah kind of to add on to what isaac's saying um when we talk about worship it just it matters what our worship is going towards so like we might be doing the same things that pagans do like we might be singing songs but we're not singing songs to the pagan gods we're singing uh songs to our god um so it's really the direction of our worship which is kind of a spoiler into the episode with Grow with Chloe next, but right. yeah, and like it's a little plug. Right there. Yeah, <laughs> and add on Chloe direction and the way we worship too, kind of because mm-hmm. we're like we said, we're not going to sacrifice babies to God. Yes, yeah. Right. In case any of our listeners <laughs> were, were worried about that, it's good clarification. People do that nowadays. Yes. Um, I would like the uh, everybody Facts. watching this podcast to know. That when I plugged my church's um, trunk or treat, Nate beat me with a stick. <laughs> so Chloe will be flawed for plugging plug her own stuff. So just be aware of that. Just clear. Right but my thing has to do with this podcast. It's not about and my something thing else. Has to do with I'm be around Jesus, Chloe. <laughs> we have some tension in the room. <laughs> just a little. Good thing you're on opposite sides of the table. <laughs> Uh, okay, so sadly, this probably won't be the best resource for someone being convinced that it's not Wikipedia. No, even worse because now they're starting to charge. So, um, inspiring philosophy. Uh, I think his name's Mike or Matt. I don't know. I think it's Matt. No, Matt. Mike Jones. Anywho, long, inspiring philosophy is this YouTube channel, and he did a uh, several videos on this where he goes into depth of like all the different old time pagan stuff and like what was true, what isn't. Um, What I was thinking about earlier when Justin was bringing that up, I was like, I'm not sure if that's true. What I was thinking of is sometimes they'll take Jesus and say, Jesus wasn't real. He just came from all these other 
uh, rituals or pagan stuff, and he they just kind of sprinkled in a little bit here, a little bit there. Like they'll take a some pagan that was supposedly born of a virgin and had twelve disciples and yada yada yada. But if you actually look into the evidence, literally none of that true. Like the born of the virgin, the story goes for that one is they were born of like a rock. That that's not a virgin yeah. stuff like that. So like <laughs> my point to say is that at the end of the day, if you re- if this is something that really worries you. Or like you're pra- like you don't practice Christmas because you think it's pagan. I don't think we're going to be very convincing from what we've said. But go look up these videos. Mike Winger also does a really good one, and uh, Inspiring Philosophy. They have great videos on them. Um, also, where I will say I got my source for that as well. There's a show called uh, Adam Ruins Everything, where he goes into detail about several different things. Gotcha. That's kind of where I got my information as well. Oh, well, that sounds terrible. Isaac, do you have any thoughts on on that? No. Okay, all right. Uh, anything else on the topic of is Christmas a pagan holiday? Should Christians practice it? Chloe? I think another point of the conversation is people will bring up, well, what about Christmas trees? Like Christmas trees are a common thing, and like they look like the Asherah poles or whatever they're called. But – how is cutting down a tree and like putting it in your house and decorating it? There is literally nothing inherently evil um, with Chloe, that. And Jeremiah you know, says we can't do that. Also, <laughs> except for the fact that you're murdering something on the earth, Chloe, <laughs> cutting it down. No, it's taking some of God's creation and putting it in your home. And Didn't it's and it's a it. fun thing to do with your family. Like is it's it? good family time. You make memories. Like it doesn't look anything like a pole. So I don't really get that connection i've heard that too chloe and yeah with uh, like you i don't think it holds a lot of water I, I do think that it goes back to the christmas tree or at least the wreath or something along those lines goes back to martin luther himself and, and some of the practices king. he did king not martin luther <laughs> king jr you. justin uh but anyways, are, are we – have we said uh, – So one last thing, uh, something I do feel confident uh, on as far as t- talking about this is some people will say that the Christmas tree idea is pagan and that it's uh, – the Bible says we can't do it because Jeremiah 10 – I looked it up. It's Jeremiah 10 where it talks about other nations going and cutting down trees and putting silver and gold on them and decorating them. It's like, see, we can't do that. That's what we do today. That's, and God says not to right there. Um one, Mark Winger talks about that, so again, go look him up. Two, actually read that verse, and it's actually pretty clear what it's talking about. It's talking about, it says the trees don't speak, because God's making a point, like these things that you're cutting down, they don't speak. What are things that they cut down and made that they thought were quote-unquote gods? It would be like idols. So these are idols that we're talking about in Jeremiah 10, not just someone randomly cutting down a tree. Like they're carving up these trees. They're going. It even says, I think, somewhere, like they have to take them to craftsmen to get cut down and to get carved. So these aren't just simple Christmas trees like we would do today. They're completely different. Yeah, and, and nobody worships those trees. Yeah, and like, no one worships Christmas like trees. Like an idol. So. If you do, then you have a problem. Yeah. And we might need to talk about that. Okay, <laughs> so we are now going to talk about the most important thing ever when it comes to your salvation. Jesus. Real Christmas trees oh. or oh. fake Christmas trees? Fake. Fake because I'm lazy. Same. And they're not, and they're not I'm, sticky. I'm split because fake. fake is so much easier, but real is fun to do with like family. So yeah. Oh, so I can't have fun with a fake Christmas tree, Chloe? You is can, that what you're but you don't get to go to the park and like, you know, cut down a tree no. or the farm. Not the farm. Justin, <laughs> today you are picking a fight with Chloe. Yeah. Okay? He's Ooh. being the devil's advocate. He's got a secret bent mm-hmm. He's just being the devil. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest. So we have everyone voting basically for fake. Chloe's on the fence. Yeah. And I think I, I see it both ways as well. Uh, but anyways, regardless of that, moving on, another Christmas conversation <coughs> we're going to have pertains to the one and only Santa. Is it acceptable? Is it okay to let your kids believe in Santa? And if so, how long should you let them do so? Anyone want to start us off? We're going to get this barn burner going. Uh, I don't know. Y'all's at various positions on this, except for a couple. Uh, Justin? I can, I can definitely see why people may not want to. And ultimately, I don't really think either side is really, is really that big of a deal. It's just a preference of the parents. But... My family's done it for years. It's just a fun thing to do with your kids. I don't see the problem with it. Okay. So Justin says, fun thing to do with your kids. 
so yeah, I'm kind of like I grew up doing the Santa thing with my family, um, and it's something. This is a topic that I've been thinking through, like for one day whenever I do have kids, like what do I want to do with my family? Um, but recently, um, I saw this thing from a famous pastor, um, Jonathan Pakluda, JP. He posted um, on his Instagram, someone had sent this question in, did you allow your kids to believe in Santa when they were little? So I'm just going to read his response because I thought it was really good. Um, he says, absolutely. We fostered the idea and celebrated their imagination. We always said, I just want you to know there's a secret about Santa. There's something about him that I'm not telling you. One day they individually asked, is it that he's not real? And I said, absolutely. St. Nicholas was a real person. But today we are left with a lot of make a fun, make believe ideas around him. Jesus is real and you'll never find out anything disappointing about him. Only awe, wonder, and facts. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any other thoughts on this topic? Anyone want to jump in? So, <laughs> I think me and Bo- Isaac both have the same viewpoint. Actually, I kind of know we have the same viewpoint <laughs> because we're married, and this is what we will decide to do for our children. But um, I grew up, you know, my parents fostered it for a little bit, but I also had much older siblings, and so they never really, they were always like, he's not real, you know, so I didn't really believe in him for that long. Um, but I was like, they did Santa too. But I think I'm not, you know, I don't no judgment for anybody that does decide to, um, let their child believe in Santa, but I just think it is a form of deception. And I, I mean, it's not really like the child is coming up with it in their own mind. You know, the parent actively has to tell them like, oh, there's this man named Santa and he makes all the toys. And in one night he comes, delivers them all and he eats cookies and all this stuff. Like the child isn't um, just like born knowing that, you know, um, and then at some point you do um, have to tell them, obviously, like it's not real. And I just think that it's something additional that maybe we don't need around Christmas because um, it's about Christ. So I think it kind of diverts from it a little bit. So I think for us in our home, we yeah. will choose not to. I agree with Mackenzie. I would, I guess I could put it more bluntly. I, did, I just think it's kind of lying to your kids for, I don't know. I, and we, like we've said, we've decided not to do it. And it, for everybody, it's their own. Uh, their own judgment on if they want to do it or not. But growing up, it was kind of, we believed in it. And it's not like it was thing that hurt me the most. But if I could go back and change it, I would, I would rather, I love Santa. I love my parents. Like, I'm not saying anything bad about them, nothing. But like, what I want to do with my kids, instead of focusing on Santa and singing all these Christmas songs about him and going shopping for gifts and all that stuff, and like wearing, oh, are you on the naughty list? Are you on the nice list? Like, kind of works, basically. And uh, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I would rather, like, because we just talk about the pagan holiday and everything. I would rather focus the season around Christ mm-hmm. because that's literally the ultimate reason for the season. And uh, I would rather have them know about him than Santa who doesn't exist. And one day they're going to be like, oh, well, Santa doesn't exist. And my parents lied to me. I... So I'm unfortunately, I'm split down both sides. And my answer to this is not going to be satisfying for anyone. Jesus or not? Yeah. How much do I love me is the real question. Um, so on the one hand, I look at it from the side of like my own personal experience of growing up, for me, it was it was fun to you know celebrate Santa like I, but I am afraid of the going too far to where a kid doesn't realize the real meaning of Christmas, um, and that it's really centered around Jesus. So I think as parents, regardless of what we decide, this is something that, uh, like you said, you like I think it's a parent's decision. But I'd say that it's important, even if the parent decides to do Santa, it can't be the main focus. If that becomes the main focus, that I, I would preach against that. Um, so I think we'd all be in agreement of that. But putting that aside for a second, let's say in my own personal experience of Santa, like it was fun for me because like it, once I learned, I think I around like eight, I was like fourth grade, however old you are in like fourth grade. So but when, when I learned then, I've learned because I saw some uh, packaging that my mom was doing for Christmas presents and it said from Santa. And I was like, oh, crap, he's not real. And uh, sorry, kids, spoiler. Um, And then for me, it was kind of fun because then I got to – kind of play along in this little game with my parents for the younger ones. And yeah, I honestly, I 
that's the hardest part for me is what Isaac said of it is like deceptive. Um, and he isn't the focus on Christmas. So if I was convinced, here's where I think a healthy Christian would be is um, if you are on the fence, I think the healthy response on the fence is, you know what, is this a big deal to where if I was convinced that this isn't okay, I'm not, I'm okay with not doing it. Now, if you're at the point where you'd say, you know what, even if it's not healthy, I'm not, I'm still going to do it. I'm like, that's not, that's not very wise. If, mm-hmm. if you're, well, if you think it's actually unhealthy, then don't do it. Um, that's where I'm at. I need to be convinced that it's unhealthy. Yeah. Um, another thing I would say is I think it's really unwise to say, to trick your kids and to thinking like Santa's real. And that's the only thing, like Zeke was talking about, if that's the only thing for the season, I don't think that's wise. Um, but if you are going to tell your kids, like we want to tell our kids that Santa is this guy who's make believe based on this guy. And, uh, People like to sing these songs saying like, oh, he's going to come down your chimney and give you... If they know that it's not real, like they know that Santa Claus isn't a real person, that's okay with us. Because we're not going to tell our... We're not just going to let our kids say like, oh, mommy, somebody... Or daddy, somebody came up to me and was telling me about Santa Claus. Like, what is that? Like, I want my kids... Because people will say, well, you don't want to shelter them. And I don't want to shelter my kids, but I do want to raise them in the right way. Mm -hmm. Good. You got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say this because I know Zeke won't and he hasn't. But um, he told me when we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, because um, we're both kind of split on it. Like we don't really know um, exactly what we want to do yet because hopefully that's further on down the road. Um, but something that he said was um, – More of a good alternative. A good alternative, yeah, if you're on the fence and you don't really know. But it kind of might be just to like leave it open for their own like interpretation and like be like, well, do the facts and the evidence point to this? And then them just kind of reason through that in their own kid brain, I guess. <laughs> I think, too, it's good to look at um, – Santa and what he really stands for also as a whole like you think about it a lot of kids in their in their mind you know they're more simple than us just believe like this man brings me presents I write him a list I get what I want um I play with it for a week and then if I'm good I get it if, if I'm, I'm good I get it if I'm bad I'm not when really I think it should be more of I'm I'm fine with my child knowing that his mom and dad worked hard to get him a couple presents this year that he can really cherish. That's great. But also knowing that we give gifts because Christ gave us the ultimate gift and we want to share that joy of um, sharing with the ones we love instead of more of, well, if I'm good, the big man in the red suit who's watching me all the time will put me on the nice list. Um, And then also I think it kind of gets into like the elves and I just think parents can kind of get carried away with it, with the magic in quotation marks, um, instead of more like a teaching moment for your child. You know, it's cute for the elf to like be in the toilet playing or whatever, but it just, it's another level of deception. I feel like it's Santa is a gateway for the elves, which is a gateway for, you know, it's just. Talk about it like it's a drug. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I just feel like. It's not what we should do mm-hmm. as Christians. And another thing is like, this This sounds like, I don't want to go overboard with the analogy because people be like, oh, well, that's completely different. But it, it's an analogy. There's a reason. So like people will say it's fun and, you know, your kids have fun doing it, all this stuff. What's the harm in it? Well, I believe it's, it's deception, which is evil. But you would, what if somebody said that to like a drug addict or someone who partied all the time? Well, you know what? I just have fun. You know, I just go all these parties, get drunk. But eventually they could become an alcoholic. Eventually something could happen to where they become a drug addict. Like just because sin is fun doesn't mean it's good. Or just because something that's not wholesome or whatever is fun doesn't mean you can do it. I see what you're saying. Uh, Zeke, did you? No, go for it. Uh, I'm going to push back just a little bit in this way that we'll read lots of stories to our kids one day and you have Narnia, Lord of the Rings, uh, we might have different thoughts on Harry Potter, maybe uh, you'll have fairy tales and, uh, you know, what is it, Grimm's fairy tales or whatever from, from Germany that a lot of stories have come from. 
And some people who are pro letting your kids believe in Santa, they'll come at it this way, that it's okay to foster imagination, story building, sense of wonder and all. Um, again, maybe be careful where you go with magic and witchcraft and some of those things naturally, yes. Uh, but world building in the mind of a kid, it's not a bad thing, and, and we should foster that and help that to grow. And even if kids think that Humpty Dumpty was a true story or Jack and the Beanstalk actually happened when they're young, that's okay when they're young because it helps to develop the imagination. Is there a difference between a kid believing something is true and someone deceiving the kid to believe it's true. Would you say there's a difference there? So if I read my kid Robin Hood mm -hmm. and they were like, that's real, you know, Robin Hood really exists and all that stuff, I'd be like, you know, I could choose to be like, you know, let him figure out all this all and stuff like that. But if I'm actively, you know, shooting arrows in the backyard and be like, who did that? You know, Robin, Robin Hood. Rubs Robin Hood. I feel like that's a, li that's a little different. Now, what about kids believing, um, for example, they're Batman or Spider-Man and they, they wear a costume and, and to the little kid, they mm -hmm. genuinely believe it. Like, oh, look, I'm Batman because I'm wearing the suit, whatever. Uh, what do you think about stuff like that? Is, is that harmless to you or do you say, sorry, little uh, whoever, Bobby, Billy Joe, <laughs> you're not actually Batman. Like, where, where is there a line there? Um, I think that's a great point, but um, sometimes we don't give kids enough credit. You know, I'm around a lot of like kindergartners, preschoolers, first grade, and um, they can easily understand the concept of real and fake. We talk about like fiction and nonfiction, and they can obviously tell like if a turtle is talking in this story, it's not real. You know, like they can see the real world and kind of separate that from pretend. And I think it's it's sweet to um, let our ch children be creative, you know, draw pictures of, um, you know, a talking turtle or whatever. But I don't think it's okay. I think it when we go from that to saying, you know, Santa's real coming from the parent's mouth, it confuses them. They're like, well, I know there's a difference between real and fake, pretend and not. But if my mom and dad is telling me Santa's real, then why would I doubt that? You know, like it kind of, they may think like it kind of sounds weird. Yeah, he has magic and talking reindeer, Rudolph and whatever. But my mom and dad said yes. So, you know, I think it confuses them. What do we do? OK, so this is a little bit of a tangent. How do we as parents, which none of us are right now, but um, how do we as parents when we are <clears throat> foster our kids imagination. Cause I think imagination is a good thing. Cause there are going to be some things in this world that we can't explain that we're going to have to trust God in without facts and logic. Um, take for example, uh, you know, if a kid grows up and says, okay, only the things that I see and I understand in my own world are the things that happen. For example, Bible talks about a burning bush, someone speaking out of it. That doesn't happen in everyday life. So the kids will be like, Oh, so that must be a fairy tale. Or what about the time where the donkey talks in the Bible or all these other weird things that are a, a whole sea parts? Those aren't things that we see in our everyday life. So how do we do a good job if we don't – I'm not saying Christmas is the solution to all this. I'm saying but everything else aside in our daily lives, how do we as parents, our future parents, do a good job of fostering our imagination to where our kids aren't uh, being – Sorry, I'm losing words. Go ahead, Isaac. Yeah. So I have a side, like I have a reverse question, but then I'll answer your question. If we tell our kids that certain things are real and then one day they find out to believe that it's not, would that not hurt them more in trying to believe things that are real, like say the sea part or something? Because I got, oh, well, they told me this is real, but, you know, one day I may figure out it's not kind of thing. But then how do we foster it? It's like we read them stories. Like kids have imagination. You can play games with them. Like kids will be like, oh, let's go sell the seven seas on a couch like the kids know that's not real and it's mm. not like you're telling them that's the sea like that's mm. the sea you know like you're not putting water on it be like that's the sea the kids are saying like oh this is happening this is happening like kids have imagination on their own and if you just let them be kids and play 
and play with their friends and be kids. I think that will foster. I think that's true for some kids. There's other kids I think that don't aren't naturally gifted with wild imaginations. I'd just take, for example, like two kids I knew who were like twins. One like would just make up stuff all the time that obviously wasn't true. like her brother beating up a bear. Mm-hmm. And then the other one's like, no, that never happened. Like like if any everything for him was like complete logic and reason. But at is like that, the age of five or six. Is that wrong? Like like if a, I think let's you, say a I think kid doesn't have an have imagination, both. like it, what if that's just their character where they're like, oh, I really don't believe in that stuff. I just kind of want to believe in the facts. I think they're both important, though. Why? Uh, because I think that there's going to be some things in this life that we can't explain away with facts and logic. And it's healthy to have an open mindset that God can work in ways that we can't explain. Yeah, I think the key to that, though, is that God can work in those ways. I think um, searching for that creativity and that imagination in other things, like in other stories, like fairy tales, Mm -hmm. is just like going down the wrong path. Because the key is God has all power, all authority. He can do anything. It's not magic with God. It's him. And he has a character. And this is why he does things. He parted the Red Sea so that they could flee from Pharaoh. He um, made the bush burn so he could speak through it to Moses. Like, it's more of God's not just doing this for no reason. And it's really cool. It's no, God's using this. Um, through his authority that nobody else has. You know, it's not really the... And imagination could be, like, fostered through the Bible if you do. Yeah, of course. And um, and instilling in your child that God can do anything is very healthy. But I think um, if you just go to the world for that creativity, then it kind of can get into your children learning to lie a little bit, you know, to some point, like where they say, like, oh, I didn't do it. Uh, the Easter Bunny did it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like it's it's not bringing it back to God. I feel like the key is bringing it back to God. So I'd like to ask another question for y'all um, just because I'm curious. Um, kind of going back to the deception thing and, and lying because I, I understand mm-hmm. that because, yeah, the magic stuff, that definitely seems like deception. But how do you justify that with like common lies parents tell their kids? Like mm-hmm. if they have candy and they give them a little bit and then they're like, sorry, I don't have any more, but they definitely do. Mm-hmm. Like how is that different, yeah. I guess? So I think <laughs> it's funny because I don't think that's okay. Like I just think, you know, you can say to your kid, hey, yeah, we're not through with the candy. Like there's still some left, but if you eat more, it's going to hurt your stomach. So I'm going to cut you off. Or instead of saying like, I see what you're saying. A lot of parents will be like, if you eat one more piece, all your teeth are going to fall out. Like, no, don't tell your child that. Just say, we've had enough. Our bellies are full. We can come back to it later. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, <laughs> hmm. like, I think kids, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, but the way you raise a kid can kind of like foster how, who they are and how they are and how they respond to things and stuff. And so if my, let's say we have a kid and we raise them to where they're like, instead of saying, no, we don't have any more. If we don't, I mean, we're going to obviously gonna say, no, we don't. But if we kind of raise them to where they respect, hey, mom and dad say it, they you can't have any more. And I'm not saying that kids are always going to do that. Parenting is obviously going to be hard and kids are going to be stubborn. But I don't think the best way, because I think parents try to get out of hard situations with kids because they don't want to be in those situations. It's kind of stressful, so they'll just be like, let's just say this, because that's just going to you know, get them off of that. And, yeah. and I don't think... Um, Parenting is very hard. You know, when you it it sounds easy to say this, but when you have an actual child who's screaming their head off, like, give me that candy. You're like, oh, I just want to say something like that. And I think that's where we partner with Christ and say, Lord, help me in this moment. Like, just tell the truth to my child. And I know they're not going to like it, but that's what you call us to do. Like, I feel like that's where the Lord kind of meets us there and goes alongside with us to help us parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nathan, what are your thoughts on Santa? <laughs> you haven't given any. You've said, oh, some people think this way. Some, what are your actual thoughts on all of this? Thanks for that, Zeke. Anytime. Now, for me, I haven't 
formed a complete opinion on this yet. That's a first. We want to balance. <laughs> we want to balance several different things. It is healthy to have a good imagination, a, a world building and, and story building, that, because it helps us to see the wonder and beauty of God. That through these worlds we enter in our imagination, God becomes greater in our mind. And so you think about figures like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings or Aslan and Narnia. No, those are not actual. Those were created by, by men when they're writing. But just different parts of them, like you're like, oh, that, the analogy there is Christ or the analogy there is God. And it helps you to see God as more beautiful and more mighty and more powerful in certain ways. And, and so fiction has a, an incredible ability, ability to do that. However... I think there's a great point to purposefully lying or deceiving to your kids. What, what good does that do? So, for example, with me growing up, my parents were straightforward. They said, you know what? Your parents got you these presents. Mm -hmm. It's good to be grateful, good to be thankful. And, uh, by the way, God allowed us to be in this position to do so. So, obviously, parents got the presents with with God blessing them in that way so that they can do that. So that's the route my parents went, and I understand that as well. And so right now, because I love, uh, I don't know if you wanted all this, Zeke, so I apologize, uh, but right now I lean towards you give different options to your kid and allow your kid to develop the critical thinking skills, and I think pretty soon with an with that kind of way of going about it, they're not going to believe Santa's real for too long, necessarily. Um, you you encourage them to think, all right, Santa, I don't know what Prius he drives, but, you know, or, or you know, all that, but how would he go from house to house? What about the places with no houses and no chimneys? What about the chimneys with the fire underneath? And, and you start walking your kid through some of these things, and eventually the child would come to see, okay, Santa's probably not real. So, Zeke, that's where I land at the moment, kind of open-ended. Uh, but I'm open to feedback on that. I have not settled my position on it, but that's kind of where I'm now. Isaac. So with the critical thinking thing and reasoning through the facts, so would you still give them facts that aren't true? Like, would you put presents mm -hmm. under the... Would you put presents under the tree that say Santa, or would you, when uh, they go to sleep at night, would you say, oh, Santa ate your cookies? Because if somebody did that about Jesus, that wouldn't be right. Like, if somebody was like, uh, Jesus was carried out of the tomb by these people, that's not a fact. You know, that's not true. Yeah. So your kid can't really reason through all the things if they don't have Early all the on, facts. Isaac, um, they're not going to be able to read. So that, that might affect the, the ability to read the tag. Be like, all right, from Santa. But I do get your point. No, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just kidding around. Uh, with some of those things, family rituals and stuff like that, uh, I'm not sure yet how exactly we're going to go about that. Yeah. I could imagine me being absolutely annoying, as mm -hmm. you all are well aware. I could imagine putting out cookies and milk and being like, well, you know, kid, figure it out. <laughs> you know, who, who ate the cookie and drank the milk, you know? So. Or, or they wake up the next morning and they're not gone. You're like, hey, what happened? <laughs> yeah, so. No one ate them. If I had to lean in a direction, because I think developing gratitude in your children and yourself as well is very important, I'm not going to entertain Santa for too long. I think, uh, you know, the, the, they'll figure it out. I'll encourage them to figure it out sooner rather than later to help develop gratitude. But in the very beginning three, four years old, with them hearing Santa stories and watching Santa movies. Is it the worst thing in the world for them to think of it as a possibility or as Santa as a real person? I would say no, but I also don't have to encourage that as well. So Yeah, I would agree with you. If the kids believe it, let them believe it and figure it out for themselves, but don't lie to them. So in, in this hypothetical scenario <laughs> where you're trying to walk the middle line to not make anyone upset, um, that's not true. I, I I think this is roughly where I land. I'm just kidding. Yours is more clear than mine was, so I can't complain. Um, how do they? I'll ask the question. I thought Isaac was going to ask. How do they even find out about Santa in the first place? 
Do you not have to put that lie into them for it to start? They go to a mall. Okay. And they see a man. What do you tell them whenever they say, who is that? I would say that... Uh, That's a guy dressed up like Santa. <laughs> That's a guy who might potentially be someone known as Santa. Some call him. <laughs> some call, yes. Uh, anyways, I, so for some of those things, both of you are asking for details. I'm not sure yet how exactly it's going to play out. But, for instance, there are... Did y'all grow up watching the Santa cartoons? Yeah. yeah Frosty the Snowman. And, and just some of those other things. Chris Kringle. And uh, I, I enjoyed those as a kid. I thought they were a lot of fun. Um, and I, I think they'll know about Santa in those ways. Uh, there are going to be songs about Santa that just if you're around culture, you have the radio on. Uh, however, you know, will I say Santa did these things? Probably not. But anyways, Isaac? Um, I have something completely different. But I asked a question earlier and he never answered it, which was if we let our kids believe and Santa and tell them it's real and stuff like this to foster their imagination when we tell them about stories in the Bible where the donkey was talking or stuff like that, is it going to be harder for them to believe that those are real instead of backwards where we tell them about the Bible and say, oh, yeah, God made this donkey talk and then tell them, you know, well, this didn't happen. Yeah, good. Thank you for calling me out like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's where I like the way Nate put it. Um, and when I said I'm on the fence, I, I really mean that. Like, cause I'm with you. I don't want to do something that's necessarily harmful for the kid. I don't think there's any real data to show that because a kid believes in Santa, he's going to walk away from the faith. Otherwise, there'd be a lot more atheists nowadays. Um, there's a lot of atheists. There's not as many as you think there are. They just want you want you to think there's a lot of them. Um, but two, so I'm I'm not going to simply say no Santa because something like that could happen because you have to plenty of exhibits in here of people who believed and people who didn't. And we all end up at the same place. I think that kind of development happens later in life. And we also understood like, Hey, this is a Christmas tradition. None of this was ever expected to be real. No one actually believes it. Like, I think the problem would be is if like you grew up and someone like 20 something's like, no, sounds like a real thing. Like there's a cult or something that says sounds real. Then we're like, okay, well if that's false, then, you know, maybe this Christian thing is false. Like I think because everyone knows that Santa's not real. No one pretends like he's a real being. That's why you don't have people saying, oh, well, because Santa's not real, therefore all these other gods aren't real that people claim. Um, but back to the fostering imagination, because I can keep beating around the bush. Um, I'm with Nate in the sense of if they find out through culture, they see some fat guy at the mall in a red suit and fostering the idea of, who is that? I'm like, I don't know. Some people say that uh, this guy called Santa. Like, what do you think, Dad? Like, I don't know. I don't think he's real, but I mean, some people say yada, yada, yada. Um, kind of not saying, yes, it is, but letting them think through it for themselves. Like, well, here's what people say. Here's, tell me what you think about it. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't really make much sense to me either. Yeah. And then kind of let them work through it. And so I wouldn't let them get past a very large age before I told them like, hey, this is just so you know, just in case it wasn't clear enough for you, because maybe my kid has low IQ like me. And I'm like, hey, look, bro. Uh, look, little boy. It's not It's not real. Hey, look, look, bro. Bro. <laughs> bro. Yeah. Um, I think that is a great point, though, because, um, I mean, there's only so much you can do. You can't. I think it's when we say we're not going to let our child, like, believe in Santa, we mean we're not going to write on the gifts from Santa or say, mm. like, Santa ate the cookies. Like, if he sees, like you said, a Santa, you say, well, here's the story. What, mm, I here's mean, what some people believe. Yeah, here's yeah. what some people believe. Um, you know, and when they don't see, obviously, the facts or the yeah. tangible proof, yeah. then they can come to their own conclusion. But I think as parents, it's our job not to deceive them. Well, I have one more question. I'm sorry. I know we've been going forever. Um, so how, whenever y'all raise your kids like that, how are y'all going to keep your kid from telling that to everyone, all the other yeah. kids? And so that's a great question. That is a really good question, question because you don't want your child being um, mean or being uh, vengeful kids? about it. Like, Yeah, what? you don't want no, your, they don't do that. your child to go and... Um, in quotation, ruin it for other children. But <laughs> at the same time, um, I think it's a call, a bigger call to instill in your children kindness that comes from God, like, um, and love. Like, we as parents show that love throughout our children, um, through our children, and they 
replicate that. But at the same point, um, it's not my child's responsibility to foster that lie either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't, I, I can only do what I'm called to do as a parent. And if my child were to say, well, Santa's not real to another child, I don't honestly think that's wrong. That's my point. This is an analogy, again. It sounds harsh. But, but if you figured out that God was real and all these other people believed that God wasn't real, should you tell them or not tell them? So you're saying Santa's God? No, I'm saying Santa's <laughs> not God. So you figure out Santa's not real. Mm. Why would you let all these people live in this darkness and believe it when you could t- when you could be in the light and tell them share the hey, gospel, share of the fakeness of Santa, share the good <laughs> news <laughs> of the <laughs> fakeness of Santa, um, and that will help in evangelism with our kid when they get older. <laughs> y- y'all had an easy out and y'all didn't take it. Y'all's kid's not going to be around anyone because you're going to homeschool. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't True. have to worry about True. that. Uh, no. That was my that was my thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think point. it's uh I don't think like Mackenzie said, to end the question for real, like I don't think it's our uh I don't think it's our responsibility to foster lies in other kids if our kid yeah. tells somebody that I think it's, it's our responsibility to make sure our child maybe does it in a kind way. Yeah. Or maybe yeah, like yeah, yeah. I mean I don't want sure. our children to say, Santa's fake and you're stupid for believing it. <laughs> well, but if they if a child were to ask my son or daughter, Do you believe in Santa? Why or whatnot? And they say, I don't because so and so, then I feel like I've done my job, you know? What if you said you're going to let your kid figure it out? What if they figure it out at three and then they go to kindergarten? How are you going to stop your kid from telling other people? See, I'm I'm not afraid to say what y'all are beating around the bush to say is it's not my responsibility. Yeah, that's, what cause yeah, that's what we're trying to say. If, oh, well, here's the way I look at it if a kid finds out and my kid goes around and starts saying that, like, I'm not going to tell my kid to do it. I wouldn't train my kid, like, hey, I'll, once he figures out, I'm like, look, hey, some people still believe this. And if they want to believe that, they can. But me and you know it's not real, buddy. Bro. And uh, you know, it's not real, bro. <laughs> just making sure you're still here, Justin, because you haven't talked in a while. Um, <laughs> so in that instance, I'd be like, hey, let's just let's not talk about it with other kids. If they don't believe it's real, they can believe that. If they believe it is real, my bad. And uh, But we're not going to you know, ruin that for them. And then we'll have that conversation. If he does it and a parent gets mad, I'm like, it's the same way it's not your job to make sure your kid doesn't convert mine. I'm not going to make sure mine converts yours. What you say, Zeke, is you tell the other parent, well, you just need to be a better parent. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Get over and stop lying to your kid. <laughs> stop lying to your kid. You awful person. Yes. You sinner. Before we wrap up this episode, does anyone want a final word? Anything to, to before we close? Obviously, I, I just want to make it totally clear. Like, this is not a salvation issue. Like, this. What? It's not. It's not. I think it is um, responsible, and I think it's good to have an opinion and to really do your research and really, um, most importantly, go to the Lord and say, Lord, show me where what's right and wrong. Convict me if I'm doing this wrong. Um, and then you partner with that and parent. But. There's no judgment if you do decide to tell your child about Santa or, I mean, ultimately, it's your decision. Mom's not going to be happy, happy when she listens to this. The thing I want to say is... How far into this are we, like two hours? Sometimes I think Santa isn't for the kids. Yeah. It's for the parents. Yeah. They believe he's... No, 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 no. I do. People, people get so into buying... Yeah, yes. by being the character of Santa and buying all these gifts for the, for their kids, and they want the kids to be excited. And sometimes, if the kids are not excited, they get a little butt hurt. And yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I think I could say something. One of the things my dad taught me when I was older mm-hmm. about that stuff is one of the things he did with Santa was to try to get you to appreciate the gifts you get, no matter who gives them to you. Mm-hmm. Like. It seems all the more special if you know dad and mom are going to get you stuff. So this stranger who I I don't really know is willing to get me something. That instilled an appreciation for stuff like I hadn't had before. And again, like I can can definitely see y'all's side of that stuff. You can definitely take it too far. But ultimately, I don't think, if you do it in a healthy way, I don't think Santa is a bad thing. And I would also say deception is like a, is a pretty heavy word for that. Because you can say the same argument of like, say your wife comes up to you and says, do I look fat in this? If you say, absolutely, honey, you look like a tub of lard. You're being a jerk. No, but what if I just say yes? I think that's rude. 
McKinsey. You can say something for niceties. McKinsey, is it rude if I tell you the truth? <laughs> Her hesitation says. I think says this is a whole other <laughs> podcast yeah, episode. Little, yeah. So, so Justin brings up a good point that we do have to bring this episode to a close, and so I'll <laughs> I'll wrap it up with some form of bow. Uh, Justin brings up a good point that in life, sometimes there are situations that come up where full-blown honesty might not always be the wisest call. We might need to be blunt what we say. We need to be careful. And uh, so I see Justin's point that maybe saying that Santa's real, saying that that's deception might be a touch strong. So I see that. But uh, but anyways, we're going to go home with that dangerous faith. If you enjoyed this conversation, make sure to tell your friends, share it on social media, let other people know about it. This has been Justin, Mackenzie, Isaac, Chloe, and Zeke. I guess me as well. I've been on this too. Nate Williams. Uh, oh, oh, are we? Okay, oh, all right, here we go. And so you had to pop back in for just a minute. <laughs> this is Donald Drake. Oh, no. <laughs> Donald Trump. Donald, Donald Trump. 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 Yep. <laughs> right. Peace out. Boys. Real and in the flesh. <laughs>